Hello techies, welcome back to our channel UI Path by Sujita. Let's do a practice session on API calls using UI Path. In yesterday's video, we have covered the very basics of API calls, right? Now let us see how to use these APIs in UI Path. Okay, this is going to be a very basic uh, uh, approach and very basic video. Uh, especially keeping the beginners in view okay so let us quickly open our ui path studio and i have created a project api use cases okay so quickly do open this and create a project with this name and then follow along through this video okay this is going to be a very very uh, simple one now the only thing is i mean for the beginners you are supposed to learn what exactly we need you are going to use and how to how we are using this in order to achieve this api call fine now uh, when i'm browsing for uh, free or public apis in order to show or use in this video i came across uh, with a funny one that is this one official jokes okay so yeah now when i use this api i mean when i'm clicking this using this through a browser i'm getting some content right as a response yesterday we already discussed this is our url or web address whatever we are using in the browser okay and if we are passing any parameters or uh, headers forget about that this is going to be a very simple one which i'm going to show uh, uh, through this video we, we can cover the parameters or authentication or other uh, uh, aspects of this api approach in a different uh, video through our next videos okay but now a very simple one is a single url when you are using this url in a browser it is giving you some response right fine now let us achieve the same thing using our ui path let's open ui path studio and create a new flowchart okay keep this as api calls okay I can say API call fine since this is a flow chart it is starting with the start icon right now go to your activities activities panel and type HTTP okay you could not able to see any HTTP request we already discussed about HTTP request right so now go to manage packages and then official then just type uipath.web first one uipath web api activities install this save it now you could see the difference here we got http request what it will do composes a request to an endpoint url executes it and returns the response in a string format saving the resources specified if specified it has authentication capabilities allowing communication with secured endpoints we, we can cover this later now just drag and drop this onto your flowchart now what it says value for a required activity what is that endpoint was not supplied let's quickly navigate to our properties panel just maximize this and there is something called endpoint yes a request url okay this is what it is talking about url to which the request is made now this is my url right copy this and go to your yes in properties panel let me maximize this keep this in double quotation okay save it this is a blind approach 
when you are doing this based on some standards you can call this from a variable or from the config file in order to avoid this hard coding okay now just scroll down and you could see authentication one two and options right coming to this options we have body body format yesterday we discussed about this right we can pass the uh, request using body and the method right let us see where is that method in the input itself we can find this request method let's just by default it has given get right yeah there are n number of methods get post put delete we will talk about this later in separate video and then go to accept format by default it is given given as any just select json okay we can cover these options and when to use what all these things to a separate video but now our main goal is to trigger this api using ui path okay so that's the reason i have taken a very simple api here which is which is not accepting anything rather url okay so we have given the url and the method type as get that's it now just scroll down and there is something called output right we have something called response content response attachment and status if your api is giving any attachment you are supposed to provide the variable name here okay next content and the status we already discussed about this every api each every api will be i mean the output will contain a status and the content body okay status it status will be given as like 200 for success and for not one so uh, forbidden unauthorized all these you know int format okay so that's the reason we are supposed to give an integer variable here int api status okay save it and response let us collect this into a string variable api response how i created these using control k there are different uh, ways to create a variable but now i have used control plus k okay if you want to learn all those uh, methods just go through our previous videos now that's all good right now just save this out and go to your variables panel okay you could see the two variables whatever created by you one is in for status and another one data type is string to collect the response of the api fine now let us run this or let me capture this response in a log message as your where is our response here right let me see what it is going to print then we'll come to know about one more concept for now let me run this file okay just go to output panel have you seen anything here no right can you guess why we are supposed to <clears throat> deserialize this response in order to get the response in a proper readable format okay now let us go to activities panel and search by deserialize json okay why we have selected a json when you go to this http request the accept format what we kept is json right right so that is the reason we just drag and drop this okay now go to properties of this uh, activity and you could see something called type argument 
select the type argument as j object okay so just do whatever i am showing it here we can discuss about all these in detail the purpose of using this j object how to deserialize all these things in our upcoming videos so now if you see here so there is something called json object is the output so now you can understand the output of the json deserialized json activity is going to be a json object right it is expecting us to create a variable of this data type so just cell give a variable name okay yeah now what is what we are going to do we are going to convert the output whatever we received using this http request that is nothing but our where is this st or yeah api response this one right we are going to convert this using deserialized json into our j object in order to get the required values okay now that is the reason there is something called input we are supposed to pass this str api response here okay now all good just save it out so we are passing an input and getting some output right now let us see what it gives okay so we already uh, discussed like let me disable this and let me show you out once again now let me use this deserialize enable activity and then go to your log messages so what are we passing here j object yes let me save this and run this now again go to output panel and you could see the json in a proper format right the output now how to get the single item value okay attribute value simple you just go to your j object give the required attribute over here say for example if you are going to you want setup give it as setup so just give this setup the attribute name here set up okay now to string now let us see how this is going to work i hope you are doing this along with me fine you could able to get this proper value right now in your big project you can utilize the value of this particular attribute as an as and when wherever it is needed now let us play with this we can display this through a message box and we can utilize based on our requirement maybe i can say What is the other one? The answer is in the um, punch line. So use the same here. Okay. 
somewhere we must be operate okay let me give it in a separate one fine so now uh, let me save this and just run this this uh, yeah see when we, we are getting this setup and then punch line okay okay fine uh, now, now let's go back to the HTTP request now we played with the content right so far now uh, this is the purpose of the status so let us see what is the status value is What is the variable name? It is in API status, right? Let, let us convert this to string in order to print over here. Now let us just simply run this and let us see what is the status. Let's go to output and the status is 200. Now let's give a condition here. flow decision drag and drop this here because we are using a flow chart okay now keep the condition of this activity go to properties panel what should be your condition it should be in status equals to 200 if it is 200 then only perform this actions right otherwise there's no meaning in doing this right so otherwise it is supposed to go and print some message let us do that as well so there are true and false blocks so if it is not the case api call fail status of api is Take your int API status and then let us print the message as well, right? So let me give that as well. Plus okay. Yeah, what is the response? API response is give the response as well okay so fine this is enough I just want to show you the various ways how we can use this in API status and the response okay now a quick recap we have learned how to use uh, URL how to call the API using HTTP request we discussed about the input URL method and the format right and we have discussed about the output response and the uh, I mean response content and the response status and its usage in different ways okay so this is a very very basic concept which may be uh, difficult for the beginners but when you practice this it will be a damn bit easy so let's discuss next level of this in our next videos until then happy learning and happy automating bye bye